So that's kind of who we are in a, in a nutshell. Right. A part of what I want to communicate tonight is the need, if you will, to virtually redefine what education is. Uh, the operational definition of education today is something like attempting to provide children with the skills they need to function in society. And <clears throat> there was a time in history where that was probably a, a, a reasonable definition and a reasonable approach. But in this day and age, it really isn't because the science is such that the goal, the definition, should be more like providing the child with the ability to access their innate intelligence. Now that's, that's a very significant difference because the perspective needs to be that the child who walks into that school on the first day is a child waiting to happen as opposed to the perception essentially is what you get on that first day is what's going to walk out in 12 years and you're going to try to teach that child with that brain as much as you can. All right, the goal needs to be to unlock the potential. And that happens by really understanding the function of the individual and providing opportunities for, if you will, brain growth and brain development and understand who that child is and what that child needs in terms of educational opportunities and specific stimulation to realize that innate potential. Beyond that, the child needs <clears throat> to be given the basic abilities and strengths to learn well. We need to also equip them with a strong knowledge base. And we also need to create a love of learning. You know, relative to a love of learning, you know, it's kind of interesting. If any of you have preschool kids, most preschool children love learning anything. You know, you can take your four-year-old and tell your four-year-old, Susie, we're going to go teach you how to clean the bathroom. All right, and Susie would think that's great fun, okay? I mean, really, anything you want to teach them, they're happy to learn it. Sadly, most kids, we take 12 years and we teach them to hate learning everything, right? Then we graduate them and wish them luck. All right, the system as it exists, you know, very, very, very rarely teaches a child to love the learning process. And as you'll discover through the course of the evening, intensity of the input, which means a child's response and interaction with what's being taught, is a critical piece in being successful in learning. So essentially, if you're really not creating a love of learning, you're really not doing the job. You know, a big part of also what is happening in education nationally is the attention is on curriculum. And the perception is we constantly need to find better curriculum. You know, I honestly don't think we need another 5,000 reading programs or 5,000 math programs, all right? There probably is one out there that'll work, all right, if we individualize what we're doing to some degree. But you know, if, if curriculum changes really provided significant changes, we would in fact have an outstanding educational system, okay? Because we're constantly changing curriculum. And one of the phenomena I've, I've discovered as I've worked around the country and outside of the country, you know, I can have a family living up in Connecticut with three kids, and they have one child who gets A's, one gets C's, and one gets F's. And the family can move to Atlanta, to a new school district, and gee, guess what? They still have one kid who gets A's, one gets C's, and the other one gets F's. And they move to California or wherever, it's the same thing, okay? Because what needs to change is the brains. What needs to change is the child's ability to learn. Right? Changing curriculum doesn't fix that, all right? The job is to assist that child in achieving their innate potential. Okay. Again, tonight we're going to help you understand, hopefully, the, the pieces to that. 